In my last video, I introduced you briefly to sync lock tracks in Audacity. In this video, I want to go a step further and I want to show you a little bit more about sync lock tracks, show you some do's and don'ts, and introduce to you one function of the label track. So let's go. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Audacity Training. Check out the screen that I've got before us. This is a make-believe podcast, and you'll see that at the top I have a, a music file, a music waveform. I have an introduction, and as well on the other end, I've got the music outro and a outro, a outro for the uh, podcast. Again, this is a fake podcast, but this might look familiar to you. Also, I have two people speaking in this. I have John and Mary talking uh, in this podcast, and you can see their files down below. Now, something that we may want to do in a podcast like this is synchronize the tracks together. We want, for example, the music track and the intro and the outro music track and the outro vocals to stay synced to each other, but not necessarily synced to the rest of the podcast. There may be some reason why we don't want that. And I'm going to show you how to separate groups of sync lock tracks in just a minute using the label track. But for right now, let's talk about the two lower tracks. And let's see if we can synchronize those together. So in order to do sync lock tracks, we're going to come up to the tracks drop down menu. And we're going to go down to the bottom. And we're going to click keep tracks synchronized, which is also called sync lock. And just for info, I am running Audacity version 3.7.1 which as of this recording is the latest and greatest version. But check this out. You'll notice that when I sync lock tracks, I get the little clock icons down in the control panels for each of the tracks. That's telling me that these tracks are synchronized together. But are they really? Are they really synchronized together? If I come up here to the music track and I move it, we can see that, yeah, it's synchronized with the track below it. Same here with the outro track. If I move it around. Yeah, it's synchronized to the track below it. But how about these tracks here? Let's move John. Let's take John right here for just a minute and let's move him to a different location. He's not synchronized. It didn't work or something. We've got sync lock tracks, but for some reason the sync lock didn't really work. If I select through the tracks, we get the little clock emblems telling us that all of the tracks are synced together, but for some reason John isn't syncing. Let's see if Mary is. Actually, I called her Mar in this one. It's kind of weird. But let's move Mary around and see if she's synced. And no, she's not synced either. Why is that? Well, sync lock tracks only works, initially at least, with tracks that overlap one another. In other words, if I take Mary here and I slightly overlap her with John, and then I try and move John, we see that now they're synced together. And by overlapping, I mean simply that, I don't know if you noticed or noticed it or not, but simply that I'm getting that yellow line. You can see on the left of John here, I'm getting the yellow line telling me that I'm lined up with the edge of the track above it or the nearest track above it or of some track above or below it that's actually got that as a starting point. So if I move John slightly inside of that yellow line to where the tracks overlap a little bit, and then I move John. Now I've got those tracks synchronized. And it's the same here. If we take John here again, who's got something to say, and we move him around to where he's just slightly overlapped, and then we try and move Mary this time, or Mar as I called her, we can see that now our, our tracks are once again synchronized. So we can take Mary again here, and we can kind of overlap. We can take John here and kind of overlap and it works to overlap because i mean this example here isn't really reality you know there's usually a little bit of silence in between you know someone speaking there's a little bit of a tail there or whatever or probably what's happening most of the time is you've got one long track here let's take john for example and even when he's not speaking there's a quiet line in there and so it's actually hooked together but i wanted to do it this way so that i could show you this principle that tracks have to overlap before they're actually synchronized. So let's take Mary again here. And let's overlap Mary a bit. And let's overlap John a little bit. And now if we move these together, let's take John. 
we can see that, well, we're still not quite synchronized. And the reason for that is because we didn't quite, I didn't quite overlap it enough here. So let's take John again, and we can see these three are now synchronized. Let's take John again. Let's overlap it a little bit more. And then let's come over here to any one of these tracks. Now they'll all be synchronized together. They're synchronized together because we told it to synchronize itself together. Now come over here to the outro, to the outro music and the outro uh, voice. Those are already synced together. So let's move them over and let's, over, let's overlap that uh, music just a hair, just to get it right there. And now our entire project is synchronized together so that we're not going to lose any kind of information or data. We can edit with confidence now, knowing that when we edit something out of John here, that everything downstream of John later on in John and Mary and the music track are going to move with us to keep everything in sync. That's the power of sync lock tracks. But let me show you one more thing here before I let you go. If we want to make separate groups of synchronized tracks, you may have a podcast with six or eight tracks in it, and perhaps you want some of them synchronized, but not all of them synchronized. We do that with the label track. Let me show you how that works. Let's come up to the tracks drop down menu, and we're going to add a new track, and we're going to add a label track. Now, a label track does a lot of different things. The, the label track's very powerful. You can put labels in it. Hey, go figure. But you can also use the label track to separate groups of sync lock tracks. So let's separate the intro and outro track. That's the music and the speaker. We want to keep those synchronized together. But let's say that for some reason, we don't want those synchronized to the people speaking, to John and Mary. We want John and Mary in their own group of synchronized tracks. So we can take the label track here. And I'm going to click and hold it, and we're going to drag it up to this location right here. And now we've separated the two top tracks from the bottom two tracks. You can see that even though we've synchronized tracks, we've got sync lock tracks turned on, that we're only getting the clocks in the top two at this point, because we've used that label track to separate groups of tracks. Now, I'm going to click the up arrow here in the label track just to minimize it. So we get a little bit more room on the screen. Not much, but a little bit. And now if I come up here to the music and I start to move it around, you can see that we're still synchronized to each other, but we're not synchronized to John. And even if I overlap, like I just did here, we're still not synchronized to John. So I'm letting go of the mouse. And I'm going to move it back to the beginning here. And then let's come over here to the end. And we can see the same thing. If I let go of it, it doesn't synchronize to John or Mary. So we've separated groups of sync lock tracks. We've been able to keep John and Mary on their own synchronization program. And uh, at the same time, separating out the top two tracks so that we can manipulate them better. Now, let's come down to John again. And let me click on John here. And you can see that we get the clocks again meaning that these two tracks are still synced and you can see the clocks in the control in the control panel. So these two tracks are synchronized to each other but they're not synchronized to the top two tracks anymore because we've separated them with a label track. And if I move these, you can see that I can move them independent of the others. I can put them wherever I want to put them now and they're not going to interfere with those top two tracks. This is really handy again when you've got groups of tracks that you want synchronized, but maybe not all of them synchronized to each other. This becomes a really good way to do that just simply by inserting a label track, which then enables you to separate groups of sync locked tracks. Say that 10 times. So this is a very powerful tool again within Audacity. It's one that I use a lot. And on, pr on pretty much every podcast that I've ever done in Audacity, I use sync lock tracks in some way along with a label track, in order to keep things synchronized together. You have to do that, especially when you've got two or more people speaking. You want them to stay synchronized. You want whatever they're saying to flow. You want the conversation to flow. You don't want it to get out of sync. But there may be instances when you want to separate groups of sync tracks from each other, from one another, 
And this is one example of that. So, hey, that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope it was beneficial to you. I hope you learned something. And experiment with sync lock tracks. The best way to learn, the best way to learn Audacity is to jump in and do it. Remember, a lot of this is destructive editing. And so it's a good idea to back up your project first or work on a completely different project. You know, you can duplicate your project, Command D or Control D, depending on whether or not you're in Audacity, in Audacity, depending whether or not you're using Windows or a Mac. I don't know what it is in Linux. I know enough of Linux to be really dangerous, so I stay away from that. But you can duplicate your project, your .aup3 file, even before you do anything with it. And then you can open up your duplicate file and you can edit with confidence knowing that you're not going to mess anything up because your actual file that you're going to use in production is still there on your disk. You haven't touched it. So get in there and play with this stuff. You know, experiment with it. Do what you can with it. That's how you're going to learn. That's the best way to learn. That's how I learned. I just jumped in and started doing it. I downloaded the online manual at audacityteam.org. And I just started playing with it. And this was a long time ago. But, you know, things have changed since then. And so you have to stay upda updated on it. But, hey, get in and play with it because that's the best way to learn. So I'm going to let you go. And until next time, y'all take care.